Fantastic. Isaiah chapter 43, verse 16. It's just a great passage of Scripture. And I want to speak to you for a few moments out of that. Isaiah 43, verse 16, if we can have it up. And I do believe this is a word for our church right now and where God is taking us. It says this, this is what the Lord says. He who made a way through the sea, a path through the mighty waters, who drew out the chariots and the horses, the army and the reinforcements together. They lay there never to rise again, extinguished, snuffed out like a wick. Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I'm making a way in the wilderness and streams in the desert. God did a new thing back then. God did a new thing when Jesus was born and went to the cross and rose again from the dead 2,000 years ago. Today, God wants to do a new thing in our life as well. Amen? So I want to talk to you for a few moments about new things. God doing new things in us. You know, just on a side note, Dave, Pastor Dave and Aylan, they just had a baby boy, a little baby Seth. That's a new thing. So excited. And I spoke to Dave just a couple of days ago and... Uh, he was excited, but he was absolutely exhausted. And I said, well, you didn't give birth. What's wrong? You shouldn't be exhausted. What's going on? <laughs> but it's so good. I'm so excited for them. And I just love the fact. Thank you, Pastor Dave and Aylan. We love you. Thank you for growing the church. And uh, thank you for your contribution. Amen. <laughs> you know, I was talking to someone just in the first service. And uh, they were talking about a young man that we actually had been praying for who had cancer a number of years ago. And uh, he was going through treatment and the prayers of the people on top of the treatment that he was going through, he came out of that into remission. But because of the treatment, he was told that he would never, ever be able to have children. He would never be able to father a child. And I was talking to one of his friends literally just in the first service who turned around and said to me, do you remember that doctor's report last year? And I actually married him and his fiancée late last year. I said, that's right. He said, well, they just found out that they're actually pregnant. Isn't that awesome? So... It's absolutely so wonderful. And I just began to think about the new things that God wants to do in our lives. The Bible says that His mercies are new every morning. You see, religion says God is old, things are old, there's never anything new. But of our relationship with Jesus Christ, we can always expect brand new things for God into our lives. New revelations, the way that God brings breakthrough into our lives in a brand new way. And this Scripture God is saying to Israel, I want a new, do a new thing in you. And so you have to ask yourself, well, what is that new thing? You know, for years, Israel struggled to be a nation among nations. They were small. They were just beginning as a nation when other nations have been established for hundreds of years. If you were to compare them to the Babylonians and the Assyrians, I mean, they were really just a small drop in the ocean of these larger nations that would often try to swallow them up. And it's in the midst of that, that God gives them this word that he's going to do a new thing in Israel's life. And the new thing wasn't that he was going to make them a military powerhouse, or that he was going to make them a cultural powerhouse and a financial powerhouse, but the new thing that God was doing in Israel's life was that he was going to make them a spiritual powerhouse that because of their relationship with God and because of the temple and their worship, that that influence and that culture would begin to draw all the other nations and Jerusalem would be a centre point where God's presence and power would fall. And this was the new thing that God was prophesying into Israel's life. If you look at the New Testament, you see that Jesus begins to speak about the power of the Holy Spirit. And Isaiah 43 verse 10, before we get to that, this is what God says. He says, You are my witnesses, declares the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen, so that you may know and believe me and understand that I'm here. You see, Jesus quotes part of this passage in Acts chapter 1 and verse 8. He says, But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and the ends of the earth. It's the same new thing. The thing that God did in the Old Testament is now what God is wanting to do in the New Testament and draw all men unto Him to actually breach the divide with people that have never had an encounter with Jesus. That because of what Jesus did on the cross, 
2,000 years ago. They can now walk in relationship with Him. And you know, church, the reality is that new thing continues to endure to this day. Regardless of some of the persecution against our faith, regardless of some of the, the, the popular culture that says some of the things that we believe is antiquated, despite all of that, the new thing that God is doing, people are still getting saved. Lives are still getting transformed by the power of the Holy Spirit. Churches are still filling up. God is still doing a new thing in people's lives. And you know, when I look at that, I began to realise that when God does a new thing, it endures. It's not easily snuffed out. When God does a new thing, it's actually fresh. You know, the word there, thing, new thing, actually means fresh. And, you know, as we look at the historical context of this passage, I want to ask you today, what are you believing for the new thing that God can do in your life in 2021? And I want to take some of the characteristics of this new thing that the Bible talks about in Isaiah and see how it can actually apply to our circumstances. See, the first thing I realise about new things that God does is that often we can misperceive them. Often they're small. Often they are insignificant. Often they are born out of trouble and challenge. That's why the Bible says to the, that the Hebrews in Isaiah, it says, do you not perceive it? I'm doing something new and it's not going to look like the way that you thought it would look. It's not going to stare you in the face, but it's going to be opportunity sometimes wrapped up in something small, something insignificant, something that you thought was there to actually damage you. Come on, who knows in your own faith, some of the things that you thought were, wipe you, were going to wipe you out were some of the greatest breakthroughs that God brought in your life. And I think we've got to keep that fresh in our hearts. I think it's so easy for us just to see things for what they are without realising that maybe behind the scenes, God is doing something new. You know, one of the things I love about this passage is that it's actually very dear to my heart because it was the passage that God spoke to me about when we were living in Melbourne and we moved to go to South Australia. And I remember years ago when we first started, hello, hello, can I have a sip? Don't you love church? <laughs> I just love this church, multi-generational church. But I remember when we moved from Melbourne to Adelaide and my parents felt a call to go to country South Australia to start a church. And, you know, my life was settled here. I was doing actually Bible college here at Harvest Bible College. I was attending this church and I was getting sewn in and I had friends and relationships and my life was settled. And my parents came to me and they said, hey, we really feel to go to South Australia. We want to start this church in country SA and just allow the Holy Spirit to speak to us. But they said, we want you to pray about it. See whether, you know, you want to join us. And I was 18 years old and I just had my license and I kind of had that sense of independence. But I went away and fasted and prayed and God spoke to me that he was doing a new thing. And as I step out in faith, I'll be amazed at what he would do. I don't know about you, but, you know, when you start off with a word from God, you think that everything is going to be perfect. You think you're going to have no problem, no challenges. It is just going to be absolutely amazing. So we started on that journey. And back in those days, many years ago, my dad had a Peugeot 404. It was an old car, 1968 or 1970. And I was driving a 1969 VW Beetle. Who remembers the Beatles? It was my very first car. It didn't have a great stereo, so I had one of those big beatboxes and I took the speakers off and bolted it into the back of the VW. And that was my machine. I had pimped that thing up. It was absolutely beautiful. And so we drove from the long journey to Melbourne, to South Australia. We crammed all of our possessions, all of our worldly goods in one of the big trucks. And the stuff that we didn't trust the removal of Swiss, we put them on an old trailer. It was the trailer that my dad had had for about 30 years. It was a rust bucket. I was surprised that he was even going to put the faith in that trailer. But hooked up that trailer and we put our clothes in there and we put our suitcases in there. We put some of our crockery in there. My mum had put in some of the best crockery that she got for her wedding day. We put it all in there because we didn't trust the removalist with our really special gear. Anyway, off we went to South Australia with hopes in our heart, ready for God to do a new thing i got to tell you, that was probably one of the worst journeys of my life. <laughs> Cars broke down. Things just didn't happen. The wheel actually fell off the trailer driving on the way from Melbourne to Adelaide. My mum is driving about 100 kilometres an hour. 
and the wheel falls off the rusty trailer. The funny thing about it was she didn't even know that the wheel had actually fallen off and she's still driving for the first few kilometres. As she's driving through at 100 k's an hour, there's a car that drives past her. The guy winds down his window. He yells out, hey, look at your trailer. She thought he said, welcome to South Australia. <laughs> I was waiting for that punchline. <laughs> I'd worked on that all day. We got to the end and she looked and saw that the, the clothes were everywhere. Our stuff was strewn all over the road. We started to pick up everything and cram it into the VW and cram it into the Peugeot 404. And we kept driving another few kilometres. One of the cars broke down. And at the beginning of the journey, with hope in our heart, we limped over the border to South Australia. And here I am remembering, God says, I'm going to do a new thing. And I interpreted the new thing as just another thing, just another issue, just another problem. Just If I just hadn't have obeyed and if maybe I got it wrong, things would have actually been okay. But the reality is 30 years later, God has blessed that decision, that step of faith. Thank the Lord that if anything, I praise God for the ministry that's come out of my life, but praise God if anything, I met this beautiful Italian woman called Anna Francesca Carboni and it was the day that my life changed forever. Yeah. And it was almost like when this was happening, God was saying to me, don't you perceive it? You're looking at all the stuff that's going wrong, but can't you perceive what I'm actually doing? I think the things of new things that God does in our life, we have to get spiritual perception. We could ask the Holy Spirit to begin to give us a revelation. Sometimes it's a thought. Sometimes it's an idea. Sometimes it's just an, a step of obedience that you never thought that, that you would be doing. Sometimes it's a new opportunity dressed up as a disaster. You know, the Bible often speaks about small things in the Word of God. The Bible says, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can actually move a mountain. I pray, church, over these 21 days of prayer and fasting, that our spiritual perception will increase so that we are aware of the small new things that God wants to do in our lives. You know, you have a look at the obedience of this young boy who gives the, the disciples his loaves and fishes. And I love this in John uh, chapter, uh, where are we? John chapter 6, verse 8 to 9. And we know the story. Jesus was always doing new things. Think about what he was doing. Whether he was meeting with the woman at the well that was culturally so inappropriate, he was doing a new thing. Whether someone was taken down, the lame man through the mat, and Jesus forgives his sins even before he heals him. Jesus was always doing new things. And once again, we see this feeding of what the Bible says were 5,000 men. In reality, there are a lot more people in that day. And Jesus does a supernatural miracle in feeding all of these people. And I love what it says right at the beginning as they're questioning how they're going to feed the crowd. Another of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, spoke up. Here is a boy with five small barley loaves and two small fish. But how far will they go among so many? I just, as I, as I read that, I felt the Holy Spirit breathe upon that. How far will your obedience go if you just step out in faith in 2021? How far will your obedience, no matter how small you think it is and what you've got and how insignificant, how far will you allow that step of obedience to go to actually see God bring blessing and favour into your life? The second thought about new God, God doing new things is that they are often not like the old things. God's new things are not like the old things. And God says, forget the former things and do not dwell on the past. It's amazing how many people in life live their life by looking through the rear vision mirror. We spend more time thinking about at the past than actually understanding that God wants to do something new in our future. And God is saying this to Israel who, be honest, had a checkered past, who had a past that they weren't exactly obedient all the time. But he says to them, it's not going to be like the past. It's not going to be like anything that you've ever experienced before. So forget about it. Don't dwell on the past. Don't dwell on what has previously 
happen. Don't include that in the equation. You know, what I love about this prophetic word is that God is mentioning the parting of the Red Sea when Israel came out of Egypt. And he says that he who made a way through the sea, a path through the mighty waters. And here we have again a picture of what God did previously is that he made a desert through the sea, but now he's making a sea come out of the desert. And God completely reverses what he did previously in Israel's life. And where he created a desert in the sea, now he's saying, I'm going to create oceans and streams come out of the desert. And he says to them, don't think about the past, that I'm going to do it like that way before, but I'm going to do something new. And this is the challenge that he has to Israel. He says, I want you to grow up in your faith. You see, previously, the breakthrough was about their deliverance. But now this breakthrough is about their declaration of how good God is. And here we see that God is saying to them, I'm wanting you to be known as a people that are obedient, that worship me, that put me first. And you know, he's asking them as a nation to move on from always being delivered and always being rescued now to being a nation that are proud of their heritage and are standing up for, the, for their faith and for the things of God. I just think, church, it is such a great challenge for us as believers. You know, there are some people that always want to live in rescuing mode. Always want God to rescue them. Always want God to deliver them. But there comes a time, God is always going to deliver you. Don't get me wrong, He's always going to rescue you. But there comes a time that you move on from always living in a deliverance mentality now to being a witness mentality that God is going to use your faith not only to impact your life but to impact the lives of hundreds if not thousands of people around you. And this is what God is saying to Israel. He says, you are going to be a witness because of what I'm going to do in your life. It's a call to maturity, isn't it? It's a call to say, rather than always dealing with the same sin issues, it's time to rise up and say, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. And it's time for me to be a witness of what God has called me to do. Come on, if you believe it this morning, say amen. amen. The third one is this, and it's really simple. I want the musicians to come. The third one is this. It's the work that he actually does in them, not around them. This new thing that he's doing, he's going to do in them, not around them. Again, it's not a new thing of deliverance or God changing the circumstances around them. It's a new thing of what God is going to do in them. And I love what it says. He says, now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? In other words, the springing up speaks of things that are outside of our control. It's not your work that he wants. He wants to do a work in you. And as I prepared for this, I just felt God speak to me and say, you know, mate, you can believe for things springing up in your family in 2021. You can believe for things to spring up in people's marriages. You can believe for things to spring up in people's businesses. You can believe for things just to spring up as God brings freshing and blessing and breakthrough in people's lives. You know, when you think about when the, when the Holy Spirit came upon the apostles in the book of Acts, chapter 2, verse 1 to 2, the Bible says, when the day of Pentecost came, they were all in one place. And suddenly, like the sound of a blowing of a violent wind came from heaven, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. And I love it, it says, suddenly... Again, this idea of things just springing up suddenly. You know, scientists will tell us that, you know, when plants spring up in the desert, it's often the reasons because somewhere along the way, seed that was blown just randomly from another part of that land where there was seed and plants were growing, the wind would pick it up and it would bring that seed over to the desert experience. And that seed would just land in some random place and out of that it would begin to sprout up and grow. And maybe the seed came from the wind or maybe the seed came that was stuck on hooves of camels or horses or maybe it was stuck in their fur, whatever it may be. But just through these random acts, seed came in from other parts, landed in the desert and that thing began to spring up. You know what? The random acts of kindness that you sowed in 2020 and 2019, the random times that you believe God, the random times that you will believe and that God will bring breakthrough, you've been waiting for that. I believe that this is the year that those things are gonna to begin to spring up again. Then in the desert, that there's a springing up, just a springing up of breakthrough, a springing up of deliverance, a springing up of fruitfulness. I'm looking in our church right now, there are things that are springing up all over the place. 
You know, we've always had a strong youth group, but I can just see things in our youth ministry springing up to a whole new level. You know, just seeing 26 people over the last few weeks give their lives to Jesus. There's a springing up that's actually taking place. You look at Sunday nights, there's a springing up of this revival atmosphere. God is doing something in our churches. Come on, there is a springing up when it comes to our praise and worship. I declare this year, we'll begin to write songs like we've never ever written before. Songs that will bring breakthrough and healing and wholeness into people's lives. During COVID, there was a springing up of us able to move forward when it comes to some of the financial goals in our church. I'll be honest, I didn't even have faith for those things. I'm thinking we just got to survive in 2020. But God says, I'm going to spring a blessing out of this church. Because some of the random places that you sowed into in your missions program, you're going to see a springing up of strength and vitality in the life of the church like you've never, ever seen before. Church, 2021 is a year of things springing up in our churches. And I want to encourage you. Listen, this church was, was birthed 70 years ago. Sometimes you can lose your expectation for new things when you've just been around a long time. And I want to challenge every leader and every mum and dad and every person who's just has had a long walk with God. Don't lose your desire for new things and your hunger for God to spring things up out of your life because He's the God of the new. He's not the God of the old springing up of new things, new opportunities, new words, new relationships that are formed, new seasons that you can't even control or manipulate. I was talking to a pastor that kind of now, one of the things I've been doing the last two weeks is been ministering uh, to all the pastors in the state. Our, um, the ACC in Victoria is broken up into 10 regions. And so they have a regional meeting where two, 300 pastors get together. So I've been travelling, you know, I'm off to Wangaratta this week and I was in Ballarat and then I'm off to Bansdale. It's been great just seeing all the pastors and what, what God was doing. But I remember speaking to one guy and he was, saying, he was talking about the next step of ministry for him. And he's saying, you know, he goes, there's a few hurdles in order for this to happen. And I said to him, I go, you know, I think his name was John. I said, you know, John, I go, um, I actually don't see hurdles as a, as a distraction or something that is debilitating but I actually see hurdles as an opportunity. The more hurdles that there are, if I know that I've jumped over them, then I know that God is in it. You see, the natural part of you goes, so many hurdles, I've got to get through them. But the spiritual part of you says, the more hurdles they are, if I get through this, I know that God is with me and I know it's the will of God that I step into this area of my life. You know? And sometimes we have a, have a different mentality when it comes to the challenges that are wrapped up in disaster, difficulties, all those things, maybe, just maybe in your life, God is gonna do a new thing in 2021. Are you hungry for it? Are you believing God for it? Is there a sense in you that God is gonna deposit something in you? Because church, He wants to pour out His blessing upon your life this year.